Alright, today I'm going to work on this thing, which is a control panel for a piece of machinery. And the switch here is basically stuffed. Right? If you turn it into different positions, and obviously physically it moves, but electrically it's not actually changing anything. The switches are not happening. I was actually able to find a replacement switch. I was able to get the codes off the switch here, and I found a brand new one to replace it with, which is brilliant. In theory, it's exactly the right one. So here it is here. It's a three position switch. And on the middle position is when you can remove the key. The left and right positions are locked in place. Not like it really matters anyway. They've got different versions of these, different key positions, different switch contacts, configurations. You've got dual pole, single pole, that sort of stuff. So this is the single pole switch. So it's not actually too complicated. It's a case of basically taking off this board here and stripping the thing down and getting it out and replacing it. But there's a lot of dust and dirt in here, as you can see. And I think all these other switches are probably going to need a clean too. These little post switches. See them all? plunger switches. I think they might need a clean too, so we'll see if I'm doing anything with those or not. So let's get this thing apart. And they have an EEPROM in here. I'm actually tempted to pull the EEPROM and uh, back up the program from it. I'm tempted to. Probably don't really need to though. It's likely the EEPROM will outlast the machine anyway, so yeah, it's probably not really required. But it is tempting. This particular machine is no longer made. You can't get parts for these anymore, like the actual manufacturer, OEM, I think they don't even exist anymore actually. I don't think they're around anymore, I think they've gone out of business. This machine is about 30 years old, this comes from. There you go, there's a header. Let's pull the key out. I don't know to get the switch out. There we go, there's always dust in here, so that's got to come out. But that dust is all in this siege, and this is probably why the switch has failed, because it's got into the switch. And obviously it's all inside that board there as well so I'm going to take this panel off completely and give the whole lot of clean in the process so I'm going to do this first do the housekeeping part do this board then we'll get onto the tricky bit which is getting this thing apart and replacing it okay that's what I screwed out this should now lift off Oh yes, that definitely needs to clean. <laughs> I will go and give this a brush off. So I've given it a bit of a clean up. I might spray some cleaner in all these switches just to help. I think, from memory, this button here was giving trouble. A couple of these buttons were giving trouble. So I think I might spray some contact cleaner on all of these and just let it soak in and give it a chance to actually do something. Put a bit of deoxit in there, so which is why I've got the deoxit sitting here. So I'll just clean those up, and then I can put this to one side, that's that one done basically. I don't really have to do anything with this. That was the intention, was just to strip it down, give it clean, and then we can work on the actual piece which has failed. Now I've cleaned this panel up, that's all done, put it back together. Let's get this apart. Now I'm going to put some flux on this, because it is a bit old, and dirty, and what have you. So I'm just going to put some flux on, make it easier to desolder. It looks like this has been resoldered at some point in its history. Not by me, somebody else. Don't know who, obviously. Actually, I might use the iron and put some fresh solder on as well. Give it a good chance of desoldering nicely. Just like it's actually going okay, actually. The solder's going alright. It's actually not looking too bad. Okay, let's desolder it. off. Now, how well does that come off? There's a little ground plane stuff around there. Let's 
try with tweezers, wiggle with each pin, see what we get. And I'll just see what I'm doing because it's a bit small. That one's not good. That one's not good. That one is good. Is good. Is good. Is good. Not. Not. So it's basically the ones which it mounted to the board, the actual mounting pins. Because obviously a big thermal mass, it's not desoldered off this side. So let's give this a bit of help. So I want these resoldered pins and basically start lifting it from the board, create a gap. And um, that will help to get it out, hopefully. So it seems a bit counterintuitive to resolder the pins, but it does actually make it easier. So I'm going to pull it over sideways and try and ease these ones out. See if we get any movement out of them. Yeah, that's moved very slightly. Just very slightly. Not much. To this side, same deal. Let's increase the heat here, got a big thermal mass. moving very slowly this is going to be tedious because it's a tight fit in those holes it's not wanting to release from them it's gradually lifting it's getting easier and easier okay and I've probably got enough under there now to actually put a lever underneath it and just basically lever it off the board so I've got to wedge it in there and just undo all four that have gradually come out I'll probably get those under there now Yep, and just push with that basically, and it will just gradually come out. Because these holes are tight on the board, that's what's making it hard to actually do. Okay, so I'm just going to keep walking this out. I'll come back once I've got it out. Okay, got it out. Get that clean. Check the traces. Yep, no problems there. They're all intact as expected. One knackered switch. We give this all a clean up with some IPA, then I'll put the new switch on. So we're giving it a clean up in that area, both sides, so it's all spotless now. I'm going to put some flux on the ball before I put the switch in, so it helps it to have the solder flow through the ball a bit nicer. Just a little thing. Then it'll be on the pins, it'll be on all the top side, the bottom side, the whole lot. So push the switch in. Should just pop in. Here we go. Now we can solder it. I'm not going to add any more flux now, because there should be enough flux on there, plus it's all clean. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to do this. Get a solder on those pads. Give it a chance to flow through. I might have to do these on the top side as well. See if it flows through. It may, may flow through okay. Right. To these ones. Okay, let's have a close look, see if it looks alright. Good on that side, let's check this side out. Yeah, it's flow through there, flow through there, cool, you can probably see the, uh, the solder there. So it's all looking good. Let's give that a clean up. Alright, it's all cleaned up over there, looking pretty good. Now, 
I'm tempted to clean the whole board. I've cleaned up a little bit already, but you can see the difference where I've been cleaning it with IPA and where it hasn't been. And that's with me dusting it off and handling it and stuff. It is kind of grimy. I mean, going through an ultrasonic cleaner will probably benefit it, but I don't want to risk damaging anything with the ultrasonic cleaner. It's possible. Right now it works apart from the switch, so I don't want to push for luck. I might just go over it and try and clean it up as best I can with IPA and just see what I can do with that. And that capacitor I should check, actually. Let's check that cap, because that is 30 years old. Got a peak tester out. Let's have a look. What do we get? Hundred and three microfarad, one ohm. One ohm. Yeah, let's get up there a little bit. What is this thing? Sixteen volt, one hundred microfarad, so the value's good. Sixteen volt, let's look at one hundred microfarad here. There's a twenty-five volt, right? Let's check this one for a comparison. Point seven two ohms. Uh, it's only slightly better. It's probably okay. It's only supplemental smoothing anyway, because it does have a you know main power supply where it comes in, so it's probably okay. I'm not worried about changing that. I can't see what brand that is. Ah, oh, it's a Nippon Chemical. Decent brand. Should be fine. Right, let's refit this panel. Make sure those pins line up on that little header there. That's the thing you've got to be careful of, not to bend those. They're in. Because it's going to these little plastic standoffs, you've got to be careful not to over them. Okay. That looks like it's all down okay. Now I think I might need to adjust the ball very slightly because that switch is sitting on the top side. So I think I need to just loosen these off, let the ball sit down slightly. There's a bit of play in these holes, so obviously I've gone a bit too high with it. Let's just do this so they can slip down slightly. Right. See if that helps. Okay. It's still sitting a little bit high. Maybe it's just the way it is. Didn't notice that before. Right, switch works. So, let's actually try it and see if we're getting the expected outcomes from these pins. Now it's all back together. Alright, die test mode. Okay. We've got the switch in the leftmost position right now. Yep, and the other one should be open. There you are. Middle position. I mean, I'd be really surprised if this doesn't work. Left one should open, middle one, yep, right one, open, right position. Yep, cool, that's all good. So that's working correctly now. Let me show you the old switch. Let's get the old key as well to go with it. Put that in there, which, okay, so put it in the right mouse position. Yep, stick this on there, stick this on this pin. Nothing. Middle position. Stick this on there, stick on that pin. Nothing. Nothing on the ones either. Right, none of the pins work. Left my position. Nothing. Basically there's nothing at all coming from the switch, which is why it needs to be replacing. It's completely dead. Should we pull it apart and have a look, see if we can fix it? Not it's really worth fixing, but you know, we've all got a spare anyway. But if it's fixable, why not? Maybe it's another good spare. It does have these little Bits we can fold over here to try and get into the switch. Just going to use my cutters for this because it's fine enough points. Okay, so we can pull the body off. Just wanted to come out. Is it the whole thing that comes out, or just that piece? There's movement, but it's not coming out. Let's put the key in. Maybe that's needed to do something to help it to release, or something. So it doesn't want to come out. 
Well, let's just try jamming something in there, see if we can force it out. Get some tweezers I don't care about. I mean, this is knackered anyway. There we go, we've got some movement now. There we go. Right, we've got some little bull bearings. Full of powder. Yeah, switch is full of powder. Okay, and there's the inside. Full of powder. <laughs> um, and it's got a little circle clip or something in there. Hold that condition together. There's the contacts. So there's the switch contacts, all full of powder. And that's what the inside looks like. Also all full of powder. Look at that. And there's the detents for the switch. So, yes, I think this is fixable. It's got a little o-ring around there as well. So I'll pull this plastic bezel out. Can I do that? The detent section. Just want to see if that will pull out. Yes, there we go. Yeah, just absolutely full of junk. So, yeah, if I can clean this out, this might be salvageable. As you can see, it's got gold contacts in there. All right, it's all nice, apart from all the powder and rubbish that's inside it. So, yeah, I'll see if I can get this out and um, clean it nicely. So that's what the inside looks like now I've cleaned it up. I think that's okay. Doesn't look like it's worn out. Ah, no, there we go. Now I've cleaned this up, you can actually see the contact there is gone. That right hand one there. Yeah, that's gone. Okay, so that's why it's not working. Contact has had it. Oh, that's a shame. That switch is knackered. That was an interesting exploration anyway. So, I'll throw that switch away. It's not fixable, which is a shame. It would be nice to have another spare, but it is what it is. Lucky I could get a brand new one. Subscribe over here if you're not already subscribed. There's other videos to watch down below. Various playlists of electronic repairs and all sorts of things. Reviews and repairs to test gear, that kind of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe. And there's also a Patreon support link just over there if you want to help support the channel. Donate to the channel. It's a couple of dollars a month. Cuts you hardly anything. But if enough people do it, it really helps me out because it means I can buy test equipment to fix and do videos about repairing that, which is what I really like to do. Catch you later.